friends, Christine. It's time for Mix It Up Monday, which I have to confess. Um, I have a calendar that I keep all layouts and stuff written down. I didn't write it down this month, and so I'm a, I, it's only a couple of days in advance, and y'all, that kind of messes my head because I'm usually pretty far in advance. So I'm so grateful. I saw somebody post something about a sneak peek, and I was like, oh my God, I completely forgot to do that. <laughs> so anyway, so that's where we're at. This is the this is with Peace Craft Love, by the way. Uh, she has a clubhouse on Facebook, and she puts the event there. So if you're ever interested, you can join the clubhouse and sign up. This is the sketch, and it's kind of got this like back and forth look with a bunch of journaling opportunities here, and of course little embellishment clusters on each of the photos. Title, blah blah blah. I've got these photos here from Nashville. Again, I've I've kind of made the comment I'm behind on my Nashville. Uh, Christmas Nashville thing. And this was the very first thing we did. We always pick like a few uh, excursions, my husband calls them. And the very first thing we did, I think it was the night we got there, was this uh, escape room. And we'd never done one as a family before. I had done one with work stuff, but we'd never done one. And we went, and I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you all during the voiceover here, but these are the pictures. Now, what I have is I do have two that are basically the same size. This one's a tad wider. I thought about trimming it because it is a little bit wider. But I kind of like that the whole word, the escape game is in there. So we're going to leave it. And I think it's going to be on that side over there. That's how we're going to do that. Now, here's the tricky part. I've got this January 2020, 2023 hip kit. And I picked it because it's kind of got this little bit of, uh, the name of it's called Stories We Tell. But there's kind of these fun little things like, um, what did I see? It was like, woke, woke up to a good life. So it's kind of like like fun if that makes any sense like there's no it's you know there's all different kinds of little things there's a little laptop i don't know how i'm gonna make this work exactly but oh, look at that cat y'all that's funny saturn's like that but i need to hang on up for cat saturn um anyways it's just kind of fun and then there's these pockets and i'm thinking can i do anything with the pockets and i don't know yet i, I just i don't know yet but i liked it because i saw this paper now granted in this case i would imagine you could kind of cut these you know back and forth but I saw this and it kind of gave me a similar feel, like it's got this like movement here. So I think I'm gonna try to make this work um, and be a little bit different with it. And then for my mixed media, I pulled out this stencil because it looks kind of like, well, it looks kind of like roads to me, but it also looks a little bit like a maze kind of, or it just kind of gives me that kind of feel. So I may put it behind each of the photos and make it look, you know, kind of mazy or something. And then I have this paste. It's, it's a texture paste by Faber-Castell and it's silver and I picked silver because the little sign and stuff like that is silver so I'm not 100% sure like I said I've got to map my photos things like that I'm, I'm debating on do I cut this apart you know I really don't know I don't know if I want to or not um so this is my starting point I need to think through a few little things and of course uh map my photos and I will come back on shortly once I've got myself kind of figured out all right talk soon all right, so I have trimmed down that rainbowy paper there by about a quarter inch, and I definitely decided to cut it apart because I thought that's kind of necessary if I'm, you know, inspired by the sketch, and I kind of like it anyway, so I'm going to just cut these apart. I did count there was like 15, like, stripes of color, give or take, so I cut it into basically five per thing. Now, I will end up having to trim off that top and bottom piece just another little bit because... Um, I do this and then I'm going to scuff these edges, but then when I do that, I still really don't have enough separation. So I will take just a tad more off the top and the bottom and it'll give me that space in between. And I really like how this turned out. Um, it's not the back and forth exactly like the sketch, but I think it looks really neat. And then because I have the different sized photo on the right, I, I think it does kind of give you that same, you know, feel inspirationally, if that makes some sense. Um, I did also decide to mat it on that blue blue on blue, like a little pattern there. I don't know what that's called. Um, a little diamond pattern with those flowers. And I did that and I almost messed up y'all cause I thought, oh, I'll get this cause I really like this pattern. Well, if I'd done that, I would have had a serious mess up because I have the separation between these rainbow pieces. <laughs> but thankfully I caught myself and I didn't cut it like I wasn't supposed to. So I'm gonna scuff the edges of these and then I'm gonna just take a little um, ATG and I'm gonna attach these, like I said, after I trim just a tad off the top and bottom. I don't leave that part on camera cause it's not really, um, adding value for you. So I cut that out, but then I'll glue those down and that's kind of the base of my layout. And then this is where I decide, okay, well not decide. I mean, I knew I was going to do this, but I take my little stencil here and I'm going to do one under each spot where the, the pictures are going to go. Now, if I'm a hundred percent honest, this first one here, I paint the whole thing 
like all behind even and everything. And then I realized after I did this, well, you didn't have to do the whole thing behind, Christine. The photo's going to go there. So my next two, I'm going to actually do just kind of around the outside of where the photo is. So the center isn't actually painted. But I don't put that on camera because it's essentially the same process, right? I'm just kind of going through this little stencil and making my making my mixed media uh, textured paste thing. And it is kind of cool because it gives a little raised effect on the paper, which I really enjoy. Um, let me think. There was something else I was going to tell you. What was it? Oh, so yeah, once I do get these pictures, though, actually, once I get them matted and all the things, you can't actually, you still see the paste. I don't want to suggest you can't see the paste, but I don't know that you can really tell it's like mazy or whatever, which is my original thought, but that's all right. So now here's where I'm going to mat the photos. And again, I'm leaving this in here mostly because somebody had asked um, not too long ago about seeing a whole process video and I, it's not like it's the whole process. I can't really get that much film on my phone here, but um, just kind of giving you a sense of how I do map my photos. So if they're the same size, which most of the time my photos are going to be basically the same size, height or whatever, um, I'll put them kind of in a little row if I can. Now, granted, if I'm working with a, a scrap of some kind, I won't have them in a row necessarily, but it's usually just smart to do it in a row because it makes makes them your map be the same size when you can. So that's what I did here. And I did decide to go with a blue or it's like an aqua. Um, it kind of hurts my feelings a little bit to cut into these big old pieces of paper. But on the other hand, you kind of have to cut them at some point. So might as well use them for a photo mat, right? So I did the blue first and then I do the pink. Um, I'll do this and I'm going to set that down there and I decide I need some foam. I cannot tell for sure, but I think I may have the foam already behind the, the photos or maybe not. I may just have laid those there. And I'm sorting out this ephemera. I pulled it all out of my baggie. And I'm just kind of looking to see what might work, what might not work. And I set, you know, a bunch of stuff aside because I go, that's not going to work. But I do kind of like what I came out with. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's still pretty random. I mean, that's still pretty random. I did pick the phone and the phone calls thing here in a second because um, when you're playing the game, if you get stuck, you can you call. Like you use a, I think you use a phone or whatever, and you call and they'll give you like a clue. And you get so many clues. I don't really remember how many it was. It might have been five. Um... And you'll, you can call them and then they'll kind of give you a little clue to move on or, you know, kind of help you get going. So the phones are all, all in all the rooms. And then I did just, again, use a little bit of random stuff. There's a little house I'll stick on here. But first, let me tell you about, I'm doing the, the title. I love this little font. I, I put on here, we didn't escape. And sometimes I think I might should have put, oops, I lost my little apostrophe there. I thought maybe I should have said, uh, no, no, what was it? No, I had something else in my mind. I can't think what it was. Maybe we didn't escape as perfect. <laughs> um, we didn't win for sure. That's, I mean, honestly, the sad part. So I'll tell you a little bit now while I'm doing the title, and then I'm going to start putting the ephemera and stuff on there. Um, so it was the very first night we got to Nashville. I was the one that wanted to do it. I've been wanting to do an escape room. I've done it at work, but as a family, we'd never done it. I thought it could be really fun. And if I'm honest, my husband was like, you're going to win, you know, you're smart, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it's not about being smart. And, and, and I mean, yes, you have to be smart, but it's not really about that. It's about creative problem solving and kind of thinking outside the box a little bit. And I'm not actually all that good at it, which is funny because I think of myself as creative. But for whatever reason, escape rooms, I'm kind of okay, but I'm not great. But my daughter, y'all, got in there and it was like she just had a knack for it. Like whatever little clue or something she, or, you know, they don't really like tell you, tell you. You know, if you've ever done an escape room or if you've not, I'll tell you, they stick you in a room and they go, okay, go. And you're like, uh, okay, what do I do here? <laughs> you have to find, you have to look around and go, okay, how do I get out of this room? And and you don't really have any, like, clues per se. You have to almost look for, like, you know, missing parts or numbers or something that may look like it goes, you, know, you might could use it for a combination of lock or something. It's not like you have instructions. So, but for whatever reason, for she just had a knack for it. Now, the, the unfortunate part, is that we, we actually, there was only three of us, so they paired us with another little family. And, and it wasn't like the kids, these were kind of younger kids that were with the little family. I want to say nine, 10, something like that. And they weren't bad kids by any means, but they were nine or 10 years old. So they're not going to have the same level of, uh, you know, comprehension or abilities or whatever from a problem solving standpoint. Um, but they were having a good time. That, but the problem is my, my daughter would actually come up like with the solution and the kiddos would want to do something different because, you know, they want to play too. And that was totally fine. But it slowed us down. <laughs> so at the end, we got to the very last. There was multiple rooms. And this one is a high quality game, y'all. I will tell you, if you're ever in Nashville, this escape game, it's high quality. They did a great job. There's multiple rooms. 
Um, we were in the last room, and I think you had to stand on some tiles or something in a certain order. And this one little kid, he just kept popping out of order because he was just playing. And it was like, oh, my goodness. So we didn't get the door open. Um, and my daughter, if I'm honest, she's very competitive. She played sport, sports and all that. And she was kind of annoyed. But honestly, we would have got out if it had been just us. So it was fine. We had a really good time, though. I mean, it was, like I said, really high quality. It was like a jungle, like Indiana Jones type theme. And they did have really good... Uh, really good decorations and stuff like that. Okay, so I've nattered on while I've been putting that ephemera down there. So you can kind of see what I've got going on. I was kind of trying to match up with the sketch. You know, each little photo had basically two spots of embellishments. I will say the right photo for me, because mine's a little bigger, um, the embellishments on the sketch were kind of on the right-hand side, and I don't really have the room for that. So I ended up with a top and bottom. Um, but I think that looks fine. And then I end up with, uh, but I do end up with two spots on each of the other two. Now, Saturn's decided to join us, and I have to admit, she does not leave. Uh, she's going to park herself there in just a minute. Um, but I didn't think it was interfering too much, so I let her stay. I mean, not her tail in the way, but you know how that goes. So I'm still kind of looking through this ephemera here, and I find, um, all right, so what do I have? In the upper left corner there, I have a little thing that says the backstory, and a little square that says phone calls. I do put a little heart on that. It says hello. And then on the right side of it, I do have a little thing that says little glimpse of our life. I kind of like that because it is kind of what we do, you know, as family. And then it says there's a little phone and then there's a little vase I think I stick in there eventually. I don't know if I've done it yet. On the top part of the right-hand photo, I did put a little house there because when we got there, the it's in kind of a house. It's not like a commercial building per se. I mean, it's not like you go up and it's like a, you know, storefront type deal. It's kind of in like a house kind of, as I recall. So I thought that was fine. And then, of course, just a few little... Um, extra goodies up there. And then the lower left, I just took, and there was a couple little phrases. One said, like, learn this from dad. One said, learn this from mom. Um, honestly, <laughs> that's not really true because she was doing better than both of us. So I thought in my mind, it's a little bit funny um, because it's not true and it's, but whatever. And, but it, at the same time, kind of we're both in the picture and stuff like that. Um, and then there's a little notebook that said, keep notes on the left side. Now, what I've done at this point is I've gone ahead and let, glued everything down just because it was, you know, it, it did, I, you didn't need to watch me glue it all down. So I've glued everything down. Oh, I forgot underneath the bottom picture or the right hand picture, it says snapshots. I did have a little music album there, but I switched it out for a little hand that says write it all down. And I went onto the chipboard pieces. There's a ton of little phrases and stuff. So I pulled those off. I pulled some of these off. I ended up pulling out totally unfazed, which is on the bottom right photo there. Um, real life is a little circle point, a, pic, a circle element up there. Um, on the phone, the green phone, I put, you can do it. Um, and then on the left side over there, I have one that says, so over it on the bottom left. And then I have one that says, don't rush, take your time with it. So it kind of, oh, and escape the ordinary. It did have escape the ordinary. So that's in the upper right of that, uh, of the photo of the bottom left down there. And I think those turned out really cute. I'm kind of happy with those. I've glued everything down. Now I, I, I pulled out my pen, but I thought, well, they don't need to sit there and watch me journal. So I'll tell you what's on the journaling. It says, the first thing we did in Nashville was an escape room. Greg was nervous, and I was so excited. But Brooke ended up being the queen of the puzzle solvers. I unfortunately, played with a couple of young kids who prevented her from getting these solutions completed on time, but we totally loved it. It was a very high-quality game with multiple rooms. So there's the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out the playlist because there will be other um, Mixed Up Monday uh, players. And we'll see you next time. Bye.